Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so we're going to address the pink elephant reeking of Dutch gen in the room, but we're not gonna do it in this video. I'm gonna keep this watch related, and this video has to do with vintage watches, and in a sense, vintage cars. Now, it appears that I may have said something against my friend's, Matt Stevens, Mercedes-Benz, and I wanna clarify something, all right? So here it is. I love Matt's car. It's a cool car. I would be happy to have it. I would be happy to drive it. And as far as cars go, it's probably the top of the food chain. One of them, you know? I, I have a special place in my heart for Mercedes-Benz uh, cars. My uh, parents have driven them. And when I was in high school, I drove a 190E cream-colored car, uh, which I loved. I learned to drive on that car. and. When I went to college, I drove my dad's 300 SD, which uh, I was a bit of a lemon, but I love Mercedes. And let me just say that, all right? Whoa, there's an earthquake. Okay, you just witnessed an earthquake. Um, interesting, all right. Uh, that wasn't a train, that was an earthquake. All right, so, um, Earth-shaking news, I like Matt's car, all right? Now, Matt is of the erroneous opinion that alcohol is uh, a bit of a filter and that uh, I let loose uh, my real feelings and I don't really like his car. Uh, that's not true, okay? Uh, that's not true. I've been on the wrong side of a perfectly logical argument uh, due to uh, the Pink Elephant's influence. And um, I can't agree that there is uh, uh, there is an element. Well, it, it depends how much you have and how much you drink and whatnot. And is alcohol a truth serum? Uh, in a sense, yes. Uh, but in some senses, uh, no, not at all. Um, I quote Ozzy Osbourne. I tried to kill my wife. I love my wife. All right. Sometimes we do and say things that are quite the opposite of how we feel. Um, but I do uh, have one uh, concern, I'll put it. Not an issue, a concern. And it's the same concern that I would voice to anybody who has um, a real vintage watch, okay? And I think there is, there's disposable income and there's disposable income. And let's talk about disposable income, okay, the first one. Um, you get together a certain amount of money and you spend it on a watch. It's, it's, uh, it's perhaps not financially uh, smart. I mean, it's not like an investment. That kind of uh, is debatable. Um, it's what you buy. Uh, it's what you use to buy your, your luxury watch. Now, if you're talking Rolex, then uh, that's a relatively safe, buy. Um, I could get out of my first three Rolexes with service costs included and still probably make a few bucks. Uh, the last one I bought, not yet. Okay, In the future, perhaps. Guido Pelagos would say otherwise, but let's give it a few years and see. I, I have a feeling. I could, but it'll take some time. They got to go up, right? Um, that's... Uh, somewhat sensible buying that's uh, debatable okay but in terms of luxury watches you could you could go uh, a lot worse than Rolex and you know if you if you say you shouldn't buy a Rolex well you know a lot of people will say you should buy what you're passionate about and and I would say well assuming everything is equal Rolex and Omega and you like them all equally well which which way should you go well I would say you should go Rolex because uh, they do tend to pull their value more all right um, but uh, you got to go with a Rolex that is, in my opinion, relatively new. There's a sweet spot. And for me, we'll talk about what that is. But for me, it's, it's something that still is serviceable. And, um, and, and in that sense, it's not a ticking time bomb. Okay, and that's sort of a theme I want you to keep in mind, the ticking time bomb. All right, so uh, let's talk about not disposable income, but disposable income. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm making my video, yeah? I made it. Good. Can you, you want to play a little bit more? We got about five minutes. Okay. 
All right, she made a friend, which is great. And she also got another swimming patch, which she got one last month and she got one this month. She's rocking it. Um, she's now, uh, she's now, uh, she was a, a, a seahorse. Uh, now she is a jellyfish, which is amazing. Really proud of her. Going to get Baskin Robbins ice cream to celebrate tomorrow. Um, anyway, um, okay, so taking time box. All right, so we're talking about disposable income. All right, now if you've got just a lot of, money to play with you know you're talking a, a, a yearly watch fund of like I don't know 50 grand 100 grand well you could probably take 40 of that and that could be real disposable income you could you could you could take some real chances with that and what am I talking about chance wise I'm talking real vintage pieces I'm talking a 5513 Submariner 5512 I'm talking you know early Milgau so I'm talking a 6542 uh, GMT I'm talking a 6202 Turnograph. I'm talking all these these old four-digit watches that uh, somebody who is like me uh, would be insane to buy. And I'll tell you why, because uh, there's a good chance that they are taking time bombs. Um, what's going to happen when something goes wrong, okay? Now, if you have, you know, 100 grand to spend on watches a year and you take 40 of that, well, you know, I mean, if you get a time bomb, typically taking time bomb is beautiful and you, you, you get it and I don't know, it turns out to be fake or full of uh, crappy parts or it just craps out the next day and there's nothing you can do and you can't find parts for it. Um, you're not so screwed, all right? Uh, because, you know, it's, it's just easier to recover uh, because, you, because it's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, you got more money, that's it. You just got more money to play with, right? Uh, so the less money that you have, uh, essentially, is uh, the more smart you have to be about things, all right? So if I were to uh, liquidate my four watches and then go four-digit vintage, that would be a terrible mistake. That would be, it would be a uh, ticking time bomb. Uh, and the best thing I could do is probably uh, try to get out, it, get out of it ASAP, all right? Um, now, on a sidebar, um, that's not to say that a person with that kind of money doesn't feel the burn of getting, you know, a piece that's fake or a piece that's full of aftermarket parts. I mean, um, just because John Mayer uh, had the money to lose on uh, apparently uh, at least one of his vintage pieces that had some aftermarket parts, um, it probably didn't lessen the burn. He probably still really uh, felt upset about it um, but at the end of the day uh, it wouldn't be an absolute disaster um, as if it was me who liquidated you know four watches and, and went that route all right so what I'm saying is that uh, the more money you have to play around with the more you can get a little bit risky with things all right what does this have to do with Matt Stevens car well um, I feel like his car as cool as it is uh, you're bordering on you know sub 5513 sub 5512 uh, uh, territory is just about as cool um, but is it a ticking time bob now I don't know it looks like he got a almost a new old stock piece uh, you know it's got low mileage I don't think he could have done better buying all right uh, but as he uses it um, I think it could uh, potentially become uh, a very costly uh, acquisition. And uh, and that's my only really issue with it. You know, if somebody said, hey, I got a great price on a 5513, it's new old stock, uh, what should I do? I'd say it's a new old stock, wow, I mean, pick it up. I mean, it would almost make sense for for me to liquidate my pieces and, and go that route. I mean, that that's worth more than my four pieces. But the thing is, it's all fun and games until something goes wrong with it and so even if I was face, faced with that choice I would probably I, I, pro I probably wouldn't do it honestly but if I was inclined to do it I'd get in I'd enjoy it I guess as best as I could for a couple of years and I try to get out of it and make a profit um, I'm pretty happy with with my my pieces uh, as is so I, I wouldn't go that route um, anyway uh, watches are a little easier to take care of than cars and uh, and that is my only concern that is my only concern and um, you know is uh, should he sell his car and get a Rolex 
no, I don't think he should. He loves that car. And so for that reason, I support him and I'm glad he has it. I just, I just hope it works out in the future for him. Then that's all I'm saying. And I hope it doesn't, uh, I does, I hope it doesn't, uh, turn into something that costs him a lot of money in the, in the long run. You know, a lot of things can go wrong with cars and they're a little harder to deal with than watches. Watches are like a more simple, uh, a more simple mechanism and um, but anyway it looks like he did great buying it's 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 in top nick low mileage and I think he should enjoy it for a couple of years but you know if he puts a hundred thousand miles on it I think there's gonna be a point where he probably wants to get out of it all right um, so uh, how vintage would I go well I'd say I would prop anything that has uh, Swiss Luminova on the dial, uh, anything that and beyond, uh, I'd probably be, be happy with. Um, and I'd go with why? Because you can have a service to Rolex, all right? Um, now, the first watch that I got was a tritium dialed Submariner, and I still have it. And I, I love the fact that it may, you know, start to look vintagey, but I can't take that back to Rolex. Um, so if I had to do it again, uh, I probably would have gotten a two-line uh, 14060M with a, with a Swiss-made dial. And that way I could have it serviced and not really worry about it. And so that's really my cutoff point as far as vintage goes. And look, I mean, if it's something a little earlier, Rolex can still deal with it, but you're gonna get, you're gonna get those, uh, a mix of, of say, Tritium, a tritium dial and say Luminova hands, that would sort of bother me, but they can still deal with it. There are other real vintagey things like uh, four digit watches where uh, they might not be able to, they'll turn you away, away perhaps. And if they do replace things, you're talking a massive uh, uh, hit to what you paid for it. All right, so that's my question to you. When it comes to watches, how vintage will you go? For me, I'm, I'm thinking um, around, uh, 2000 you know give me give me a piece with uh, at the very earliest a Swiss style with just the regular Luminova I prefer the super Luminova and uh, and anything going on from there I I'm happy but uh, yeah I'm I'm not in a position to uh, afford to take a hit on a ticking time bomb and so four digit you know old sports models they're, they're not happening all right um, anyway, hope that clarifies thing. Hey, Matt, enjoy your car. I love your car. All right. Um, and I, and I, you probably know what you're doing, so I don't think we need to worry. All right, guys, take care. Let me know what you think. How vintage would you go when it comes to watches? Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.